working in the in the early morning and at twilight is your favorite time. Do you do you when you go out to paint? Do you have a a selected place? Do you like hunt for a place and then go to it? I, How do you yeah. choose? How do I select? Uh, I often do a lot of uh, recce work during the day. So I'm driving around and I think, okay, I've got my compass or whatever. I know the light's going to be rising here and setting uh, from another direction. So I have an idea of where east and west is. So, you know, obviously in the morning I'll go for the east side and in the afternoon I'll go for the west side. Um, so I have that. But when I get to the location, you know, I'll go to whatever looks interesting. So I have an idea that. Um, you know, I'm going to paint in a certain field, but as to the exact location, obviously within the field, then I'll, I'll search around. And, you know, having to, to lug a lot of gear around is also quite limiting. You know, by the time you've got your easel and your paints and your thermos and your wet weather gear, uh, you know, you, 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 you can only get so adventurous. And, uh, so you're talking about oil painting. You, you mainly you're painting oils. I'll take, I take everything. I yeah. take acrylic band oils out. What I do is because the drying time is so slow, to speed things up, I'll get it started in, in acrylics, uh, get the ground colours down in acrylic, and then I'll paint with oil over the top of that. I see. Okay. Just to speed things, just to speed things up a bit. I mean, I might not do that in the studio, but when I'm out in the field, that's my practice. Okay. And what about when you can't go outside? What uh, What kind of things do you do in the studio when it's... Uh, okay. Too rainy. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, I tend to do, you know, I, I do do a lot of thumbnail sketches uh, or no tan, which is just black and white. So I have to commit to is there color or tone here or not. Uh, and that I find, I go back into the studio, then I make mono prints, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, just black and white mono prints of, of things that I've been looking at. So I find that really helps. And, the other beauty of that is there's always a surprise because when you pull a print, and I hand pull them, but when you pull them, you never quite know what you're going to get. Yeah. So that actually adds to my artist, you know, my sort of um, creative ideas, my vocabulary. Uh, and, and sometimes I take those monoprints into paintings. I quite like the effects of that. Okay, good. So this, <laughs> this, is, this is kind of the question about your work habits. Uh, Yes. Do they change from season to season? Do you have a favorite season that you, you're you more productive than others? Yeah, it, it's, it's not so much the season for me, but it depends on my, my work teaching schedule. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I find that I have to, um, you know, squeeze in sometimes. You know, I have to make time to do something. So I always have to have a sketch pad or something handy in my bag because, you know, I can work a 10 hour day of teaching and then you know it doesn't leave much time or energy so so I do that but periods when I'm not teaching I, I can I get out and I'm, I'm quite focused because I'll have everything pre-prepared I'll have all my uh, canvases and supports all ready to go I make my own panels uh, small panels to take out into the field and I have them all ready to go so all I have to do is just pick them up and you know go out there and paint I don't try to do prep work when it's painting time, that's what I do when I'm on the go slow periods, as it were. All right. Here's here's the question: the the aims, your aims or your goals in painting. Now, I divided this into micro and macro. I don't know if that's very clear, but is there a goal every painting that you do, and is there a goal, an overall goal that what you're working to uh, as 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 your lifetime goal? Can you just talk a little bit yeah. about that? I mean, I mean, I suppose we've, we've we've all got those sort of like plans of where we'd like to see ourselves or what we're after in our work. I mean, I'm like uh, very much focused on experience. So whatever I'm looking at or whatever I'm painting, um, the overall aim is for someone to get the experience of the place that I've painted. I don't just want an illustration of the place I've painted. However, as a means to an end to get to that goal, I actually have to do illustrations first 
because that helps me to analyze a bit of what I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. But I don't see those sort of things as the end result. Um, they're just a means to an end to get to a sense of an experience of place. And it might mean that there's actually less information in the finished piece. So it's not necessarily adding more information. It might be a question of deleting things. I'm not interested, the things I'm not interested in, you know, the, the initial results might be quite tight and very, um, you know, very accurate. Yeah. But I might want to distort space. So I'm always thinking in the long run of if someone was looking at this for a first time, would they have a sense of of, of um, being in that place? Being yeah. a landscape painter, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm doing place. I tend not to do people. And I don't generally put people in my landscape paintings either. And what about the overall goal? Do you, do you see your work in the line of, of, of some kind of larger scale, some kind of larger effort on the part of artists uh, working in around where you live or working maybe that, that you've seen on internet? Uh, do you see yourself in a global situation? Yeah, I, I think uh, what has happened, you know, I've moved to this small area, but um, I've now taken over chairmanship of the local art club. Uh, mm -hmm. that we have and one of the things uh, that I'm setting up are outdoor painting sessions uh, you know encouraging people to go out and look not to paint from photographs to actually go out and look at the scenery so you know I'm starting you know a little bit of practice like that uh, I'm introducing uh, I do teach a couple of art classes in the community as well uh, with, with a lot of focus on looking at art history and other other contemporary artists um, mm -hmm. just how really about problem solving yeah. you know, a lot of artists problem solving yeah. and you think well how, am I, how, how do I do that okay it's all very well having these ideas in your head but how do you actually do it and, and you know though, though we're not really copying it is quite good to look at other people and and then that puts you into a bigger frame because you find other uh, other artists doing the same and you connect with them, not necessarily for their work, but for the people that they're looking at. You think, oh, I'm looking at that too. Exactly. And that's, that's a connection. I understand that completely. Speaking about connections and things, uh, what about a, a painter? Do you have a painter in mind uh, as an influence? Someone that, either a teacher or some famous artist that you've, really considered a lot in your own work? Yeah. Um, I mean, some of the people you may not know because, you know, they're English painters, but there's an artist called Paul Nash right. uh, who painted at the time of World War II. Yeah. Uh, so though it was landscape, there's kind of a surrealist, slightly mm -hmm. surrealist type um, uh uh, type of view to it. I like I like Birchfield, the American painter, mm -hmm. and I, I particularly like his watercolors. Uh, I, I like Emil Nold, the German mm -hmm. painter, and his landscape colors, which are wild. Uh, but I, but I, you know, but I, I you know, I like I like Constable Turner and, and, and those sort of things. Um, and I've looked a lot at Dutch painters as well. I really like um, um, Van Ruysdale, mm -hmm. uh, very classical Dutch painting, but wonderful. Um, wonderful sense of space mm -hmm. you know I'm interested in space so people that work with that and distorting space and flattening space all, all those sort of ideas yeah. so those would be a handful I can see that yeah and and what about you you teach and you you talk to people about art what, what, what would you say to someone a young person who who wants to take up painting what what kind of advice would you give yeah, I had that. I actually had that discussion with an 18-year-old the other day. Who we've got an online um, Malmesbury Art Club mm -hmm. with a, a bit of a promo there, but uh, Malmesbury Art Club, and we had an 18-year-old boy that sort of said, "Oh, I want to learn more about painting." I thought, "Great, excellent. Why don't you come out with us into the field?" Mm -hmm. Because when you're out in the field, you have to do everything, and you see how it's done. You know, you can sit down and read books and learn all this conceptual stuff at art school, great, but you go out with a, well, I call myself a master painter, but I'm not really, but you go out with, a, with an experienced painter and you, you just watch what they're doing and you follow what they're doing and their process. I think you learn, you learn an awful lot very quickly uh, and you learn 
you know, even right down to, you know, how you lay your paints out, your brushes that you pick up to use, what support are you using, all those things. And you can have a discussion, you know, around that. This idea that you throw a kid into an art school and say, go for it. Um, I don't want to tell you anything because I don't want to spoil or, you know, dictate your direction. Yeah. And they're floundering and, and, and they're lost and they're very upset. Yeah. Uh, I met a lot of young artists who, who are really confused. And I think that's so sad. It's a lifetime of, um, you know, it's a lifetime's journey. And, yeah, uh, yeah. It's the, the style, the style searchers. Well, the last question, I, we're, we're speaking on through internet and and this is I'm really excited about it because it, I I just can't believe you know sometimes that you can turn on the computer and you can you know it feels like I'm I'm in the room with you you know and we're just yeah, chatting yeah. we could be drinking tea or something and yeah, and yeah. what do you think about art now that there is this wide open area internet where you can see people's art you can put your art you Pinterest, uh, Google Plus, you, the, all these places where you can put your art, all these websites that sell art. What, what do you think about all that? Well, I mean, living in a small rural place, obviously, it's it's been it's just been phenomenal. And you know, whereas before, when I first moved to this area, and I was really isolated. I mean, there was no one really here who thought like me, and it was very lonely. I mean, it really was. And in the last four years since I've been involved with it, you know, I've had amazing discussions with people. So, um, you know, I mean, I guess, I guess that it, that's just phenomenal. Uh, you know, I can't, uh, I'd be lost without it now. You know, there, you can delete the things you don't want to see. You can delete the bad things. I think one of the most difficult things is the, is the, the kind of copyright issues and things like that that are creeping up. I mean, not that anybody would copy my work. It's, it's not in that league. But, you know, some people have complained about yeah. it and, uh, you know, plagiarism. But, I mean, you can find that in your own hometown. So, uh -huh. you know, I mean, that's always been an issue. Okay.